Hallelujah. Giving all glory and all praise. God our King. Come on, say the prayer. You want to say the prayer, right? Huh? Hallelujah. 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 Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill, O Lord? Who shall stand in thy holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek thy face, that seek thy face, O Yaakov Shelah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even be lift them up, ye everlasting doors, so the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, so that the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? Yah Siva O, the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. We're going to get ready to bring my son in. And uh, we're going to get into the Maccabee portion. Hanukkah. Giving glory and praise to our God, our King. You understand how important this is, man? You understand what it is to stand in the presence of God, our King? That's why you never... Put yourself in a position to where you allow your spirit to draw you out of a holy convocation. You understand that? Especially when the holy convocation is still going on. One other thing I want to say, family. You never allow nobody to call you on Shabbat and draw you out of God's calling. Ain't nobody important, more important than that. You understand? For the, If you got time in, in this way of life, People outside of this way of life should know not to call you. You understand what I'm saying? That's important. That's glory and respect given to God most high. It's God over everything so that he can protect that which you love. He'll protect those that call you because of the love that you have for them. Like Abraham. We got the same thing Abraham got. We just got to activate it. You understand? We got to activate our power with God. It's a wonderful thing, man. It's a wonderful thing to be in this position, man. Are we ready? Bring it up. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I see my family. Um, with no further ado, um, we wanted to go into the uh, lesson to uh, give some information on Hanukkah and um, its origin and where it comes from. So we're going to be going into the book of the Apocrypha. We'll also get into a lot of other um, days that our forefathers actually put together and the creator accepted. So, um, I know we don't have much time, especially in the afternoon. Sun, I'm in Georgia, so the sun now goes down later for us over here than it does for you guys. So um, y'all just got to give me the cue when the sun is down so that so that we can shut it down. Um, and with that being said, um, let's just go into uh, the first uh, Maccabees uh, chapter. We, still, we did chapter one, right? So um, we could go into uh, first Maccabees. Uh, chapter two. I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. Um, to the brothers that are um, controlling the uh, tech, could you make sure that the screens that I put up project bigger than uh, our camera does? I would appreciate it greatly. And I'm gonna attempt to share my um, my um. My screen. I don't see the share thing. Hold on. Where can I share from? Yeah, settings present. Okay. Share screen. Perfect. 
Share your screen. Boom. 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 And just uh, bear with me a little bit. Um, I'm going to start the slideshow. Slideshow uh, from the beginning. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Let me just get rid of this stuff. Are we good to go? Okay, great. So with that being said, um, let's go into Maccabees. The book of the Maccabees, and we're going to go into the Torah, or we're going to go into the Tanakh as well. So we'll start out with the book of the Maccabees, and uh, we're going into chapter two. So this, the name of this lesson is called Hanukkah Reloaded. So we're trying to, um, you know, give some people some information on the actual holiday that our created, our, our our forefathers created, and that um we should carry on the tradition. So with that being said, let's go into the uh, book of the Maccabees. Mm -hmm. hold, hold, hold on, 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 hold on. Let's go. Let's go into... I'm just having some tech issues. Y'all have to bear with me. It's just throwing my whole thing off. I know we rushing, but um, again, first of all, let me start there. First of all, I want to give all honor and praise to the Power of Abraham, power of Isaac, power of Jacob, the great mighty and revered one, the most high, maker, own and possessor of all things and everything. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. Um, secondly, I do want to give respect to my father, Hanan C. Support, Ben Zavulam, asking the creator to continue to God's and to protect him as well. Um, giving due respect to the dignitaries, the chief man, princes, brothers and sisters online, and our family that's in the house. We bid you on the tongue of our ancient forefathers. Shabbat shalom. Shalom alaikum. Shalom. Yeah. yeah. So let's go. We're in the book of in the book of Apocrypha, in the book of the Maccabees, chapter two, mm -hmm. verse one of the source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Jo 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 mm -hmm. from Jerusalem, and dwelt in Modin. He had five sons. Right. So before we get into the actual um, who Mattathias is, let's talk about where he comes from. Because there are a lot of misconceptions about people from this period and who their ancestry is. Now, we're talking about sons of Aharon at this time. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sons from even more specific Pinchas at this time. Okay. The Maccabees, the Hesmonians. So... um. When the Greeks first encountered Jerusalem underneath Alexander the, um, the, the, Alexander the Great, they came into uh, Jerusalem and they came to do damage. And I know I said this uh, on a previous lesson that we did before. And they came in, but Alexander had a dream about the priests and their white garb and coming out with their senses. And what it said is that Shimon the Great or Shimon the Just, they referred to him as Shimon HaSadiq, Shimon the Righteous. He was the... Uh, Kahuna at that time, the high priest at that time. And um, he actually came out. And when Alexander saw him, he refused to ransack the temple. So they went into a league, allegiance or a league, and they had an agreement with the priests of that period. So the priests of that period agreed to name their sons after Alexander. Because initially what he wanted them to do was erect a statue in the um, temple of himself. But the priest is like, nah, we don't put no statues or anything in the temple, but we will name our sons uh, Alexander. So you're going to see through this lineage, you're going to see the, even the sons of Shimon the Just, or Shimon Hasadi, uh, Kohen, Ha Kohen. Um, you're going to see that some of the people who are in his lineage are named Alexander. Now, let me just give you a brief uh, background of Shimon uh, the Great or Shimon the uh, Righteous or Shimon the Just. It says, personally, his personality and high esteem in which he was held, in which he was held, are shown by poems in Sirach, which compare him at a moment of his exit of the holies, of holies to the sun, to the moon, to the stars and to the most significant plants. This poem appears in certain uh, changes. This poem appeared with certain changes 
in the Yom Kippur Musaf service known by the title of um, Mare Kohen. Now, the thing is, is that um, a lot of people may not be familiar with the Musaf services, um, but there are certain prayers and, you know, which they, they, they give, you know, props to the Kohanim. And um, because of Shimon the, the righteous, they changed the young, after his death, they changed because they revered him so much. He was that kind of guy that nobody else felt worthy to follow him in being a Kohanim, that they changed the service of Yom Kippur at that time because they said nobody else had the right to say certain things because they weren't at his level. So if you look at the last paragraph on this slide, it says, without the presence of Shimon Hasadik among them, the Judean people were no longer worthy of the miracles that are, had occurred during his lifetime. For this reason, following his death, the priests refrained from blessing the people with the explicit name of God, the Tetragrammata. So that's the yod Hey wav Hey in the priestly blessing. That's why it's important for us to learn our history and learn about what our forefathers did and how they moved. Because it, I can guarantee a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't know that the holy name, that yod Hey wav Hey name wasn't even presented to the average citizen. We read scriptures and say the yod Hey wav Hey, which is something that we should not do because it's not a common name. This name was referred to on Yom Kippur. This is the holy name of the king, and we just use it when we read it. And these are some; these are things that we cannot do. We we have to learn from the culture of our people and how they conducted themselves as far as levels of holiness. It's real important stuff. But um, that's Shimon. Oh. Not only that, do me a favor, hold on to Maccabees right there. Go to uh, the book of Sirach, um, the 50th chapter, because what happens is there's a whole verse about Shimon Hasadit in Ben Sirach, the 50th chapter. So if you could read that a little bit. You see it? Mm -hmm. uh, the 50th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next. Go, go further. Okay. There you go. Yeah. He's asking. Okay. 50th chapter, right there. Mm -hmm. First one. Yeah. We're in the book of Ben Salah of Ecclesiasticus in Apocrypha, chapter 50, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Simone, the high priest, the son of Onias, who is who in his life repaired the house again. Right, so another thing that we have to keep in mind is that this particular period that they're referring to, as well as the Maccabee period, is a period that they refer to in rabbinics as the Zugotic period or the Zugot period of rabbinics. Go ahead. And in his days fortified the temple, and by him was built from the foundation the double height. And a high fortress of the wall about the temple. Right. In his days, the cistern to receive the water, being encompassed of the sea, was mm -hmm. covered with a place of brass. Right. He took care of the temple that it should not fall and fortify the city against against besieging. Mm -hmm. How was he honored in the midst of the people? In his coming out of the sanctuary, he was the morning star in the midst of a cloud, and as the moon at the full, as the sun shining upon the temple of the Most High, and as the rainbow giving the Given the light in the bright clouds, mm -hmm. and as the flower of roses in the spring of the year, as lilies by the rivers of the waters, and as branches of the frankincense, frankincense tree in the time of summer, as fire and incense in the censer, and as a vessel of beaten gold set with all manner of precious stones, right. and as a fair olive tree budding for fruit, and as a cy cypress tree which groweth up to the clouds. Right. So, and these are words from our people, but understand. They're paying honor to uh, Shimon Hazadik in this particular um, in this particular um, in, the, in this particular writing. Mm -hmm. So 
these are characters and these are people that we need to familiarize ourselves with because these are actual Israelites that held it down. These are Israelites that went into the temple and fought. These ain't lazy Israelites like we read about in the book of Exodus who refused. These are people that did the law even though people had pronounced death upon them. This is us trying to get back into the groove of the ancient way of doing things with the functional priesthood. So, you know, it's important that we remember those who died for this word and who lived for this word. So let's go back to the uh, book of the Maccabees. Shimon, um, also Shimon the Righteous or Shimon uh, Hasadik also is... Um, some people say it's a, it's a discrepancy, but he has to fall in some way because the Hasmonean dynasty are descendants from the high priest. So this is where you get the Maccabees from, that whole Hasmonean dynasty. Mm. And when we say Hasmonean, um, that's what we're referring to, the Maccabees. So this is an actual breakdown of the Hasmoneans who were the high priests who later became known as kings of Israel or the Southern Kingdom as well. So this is a little breakdown. You had the Maccabee Rebellion, you had Mattathias, you had Judas Maccabeus, you had Jonathan, Aphos, who was a high priest that gives you the dates and the time. So if you have uh cameras, uh, snap it, you know, save this particular um, chart so that you have an idea of what was going on. Um, then you see where, um, some of them actually wore crowns. Like when you get to Harkonnes and you get to Aristobulus the first and then Alexander Janaeus and then uh, Salome, who was a queen. Um, you get to Harkonnes the second, who was a king priest. Um, Aristobulus the second, Harkonnes. The, all of these guys were people who actually lived during that intertestamental uh, period with a function in priesthood and who were the descendants of the Maccabees. Mm. So with that being said, that's just a little bit about who the Maccabees were and where they come from. Um, you can start reading from the top in chapter two. Yes, sir. We're back in the book of the Maccabees, chapter two, verse one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the son of the old reed from Jerusalem, uh -huh. and built in Modin. Right. And he had five sons, Joan, Joanon, mm -hmm. called Caddis, Sim, Sim, Simeon, called Dasi, Judas, who was also called Maccabeus, Eleazar, called Avara, and Jonathan, whose surname was Aphis. Right. So that was the Israelite names and they, and they, and they Moses names. <laughs> that was the Israelite name and they, and they, uh, uh, Common names. So Mattathias, let's look a bit little bit about Mattathias. Mattathias was a priest who was from a town of Modin. Modin is somewhere north, uh northwest of Jerusalem. Somewhere right here, if you can follow the mouse. Not too far from where um, I guess this area right here, right? So they by the the, the coast area too. Um it says um, near Jerusalem, who lived in 167, the five decrees of Antiochus Epiphanes of uh, Syria to Hellenize the Hebrews. He fled to the Judean hills with his five sons and waged guerrilla warfare against them, being succeeded by his son, Judas Maccabeus, because according to Fl Flavius Josephus, Mattanias' great-great-grandfather was called Hesmonius. The family is often uh, designated to the Hesmonians rather than the Maccabees. So um, one of the reasons why uh, Flavius Josephus is so in interested in them is because according to his mother's lineage, these were his cousins. Yeah, according to his mother's lineage. But that's another story. So let's uh, go back in, and this and this was actually gotten from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm. Go ahead and um, read that. Verse six. Right. And when he saw, and when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem, he said, "Woe is me! 
Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people right. and of the holy city and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy mm -hmm. and the sanctuary into the hand of the strangers. Right. Her temple has become as a man without glory. Right. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. Right. Her infants are slain in the streets, her young men with the sword of the enemy. Mm -hmm. One nation have not had a part in her kingdom right. and, gotten, and gotten of her spoils. Right. All her ornaments are taken away. Of a free woman, she has become a bond slave. Right. And behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory, is laid waste, and the Gentiles have profaned it. Mm -hmm. To what end, therefore, shall we live any longer? So what, what, Jude, what, what, what Mattathias is actually saying is like, listen, everything that we had, everything that we held sacred is being ripped apart. Mm -hmm. The Greeks are a different kind of people than the Hebrews were. Listen, we were a different kind of people. Even when our father Abraham came into the land of uh, Canaan, we were a different kind of people. Our fathers came from Ur the Chaldeans. Chaldean in the term Chaldean or, or Chaldean actually in Hebrew what we're referring to as Chaldean. But guess what? Chaldean, and as we read here, you're going to bump into a people called the Assyrians who are actually the, uh, uh, in Hebrew, they're referred to as the uh, Chaldean. It means pious. We were, our father Abraham was from an area where people were, were pious, God-fearing people, even though they may have not known who the true and living God was, but they had a certain degree of godliness opposed to what was going on in Canaan. Now, times the atrocities of Canaan, times a hundred, and then you have what the Greeks is into. So Mattathias, seeing all of this, he's like, woe is us. What are we going to do as a people? And this is why a lot of them started leaving the cities and fleeing to the hills to get up out of the, the, the main scene. Because in the first chapter, it even says the beauty of the people was changed. That means, like, if you look at us right now and you look at our forefathers, who lived in the 20s in Harlem, and you see those black women who wear those white gloves, and you see those black women who had them fur coats on and them brothers with them hats on and the boater hats and the ties and, and how they look, they look like royalty. Even in the foreign apparel, they look like royalty. There was a certain amount of class that they had. But then when you consider that generation of yesteryear to the beauty of the generation of this year, the beauty has changed because no longer is it appropriate for a woman to be covered up. It's appropriate for her to not be covered up. Women go to bars now in sheer outfits where you can see every nook and cranny of their body. The beauty from the 20s to now has changed. And that is the example that I'm giving when it comes to what the uh, book of the Apocrypha is saying, it says, and the Greeks changed the beauty of the people. They wore us out. They turned us out. Mm -hmm. We started doing things that our forefathers would have never imagined. Tell you. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then Mattathias and his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth right. and mourned very sore. Right. In the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came, came into the city, Modin. To make them sacrifice. Right. And when many and when many of Israel came unto them, Mattathias also and his sons came together. Right. Then answered the king's officers and said to Mattathias. So, so hold on. So they know right now that in Modin, a lot of people knew that Mattathias was not to be played with. So men started to assemble themselves to him in Modin. So you know, his name is ringing bells even outside of Modin. And what happens is now they want to make a spectacle of him because he's a big shot. Mm. So they want to make an offering and have him participate in their offering. Yeah. This is what this is about. It's not about just eating swine's flesh. It's not about eating something unclean. It's about the principle. Mm. Tom Sheik.
Then entered the king's officers and said to Madat, no, verse 16. Yeah, you there. And when many of Yishayel came unto them, Mattathias also and his sons came together. Then answered the king's officers and said to Mattathias on this wise, Thou art a ruler and an honorable and great man in the city, mm -hmm. and strengthened with his sons and brethren. Now therefore come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment. Right. Like as all the heathen have done, yea, and the men of Judah also, and such as remain at Jerusalem. So shalt thou in thy house be a number of the king's friends. So what they telling him to do is do the politically correct thing. See, when we read these books, what we have to do is we have to look at it through our bifocals, through our time frame. Yeah. There are certain things that we are asked to do, even in this captivity, that conflict with the principles by, of which we stand for. So this is an issue of principality, as Big Worm would say. This is an issue of principality, opposed to just eating swine's flesh. It's what it represents. So they wanted him to do the politically correct thing. And that politically correct thing is to do what everybody else had done. Mm. The Judeans in Jerusalem, mm. all of the people from the outskirts, all of the other big shots, all of the other priests had crossed over. All of the other priests sold out because they were scared to die. But this man, Mattathias, this priest, Mattathias, is not afraid to die. As a matter of fact, if you're not ready to die, you can't be with him. That's how deep he is. Yeah. So with that being said, let's hear his response. What do he say? And thou and our children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. So he said he's going to pay them off. Mm -hmm. He's going to make them rich. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. No, so he listen, he want everybody to hear his response so that the record reflect that wasn't no sideline conversation going on. I want you all to hear my final answer. And what was that? Then Mattathias answered and spoke with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. Now and all the nations that are under the king's domain obey him. Right. And fall and fall away every one. From the, from the religion of their fathers. Right. So this is a translation. Religion. We know religion comes from the, 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 the Greek word, uh, which means to abstain, realeo. And what he's saying is basically the way of life of their fathers. Yeah. Tomshi. And give consent to his commandments. Right. Yet will I, my sons and my brethren, walk in the covenant of our fathers. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. Right. We will not hearken to the king's words. Right. To go from our religion either on the right hand or the left. Right. Now, when we had now when we had left speaking these words, there came one of the Jews in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar. Right. So as he's as he's getting wow. ready to finish saying what he's saying, wow. here come a sellout, one of his own people, wow. a sellout, and he like. You don't want this money. I'm, you know how our people are. And he goes to put something on that altar to sacrifice. And what happened? On the altar, which was at Modin, right? according to the king's commandments, which that which thing when Mattathai saw, he was inflamed with zeal. Right. And his reins trembled. Mm -hmm. Neither could be, neither could he forbear to shoot his anger against the judgment. You ever get so mad? That all reason just leaves you. It said he's shaking. He said, I'm about to kill this dude right here. He got to go. How dare you? We making a stand. And here you go with your little step and fetch your coon itself. Mm -hmm. Come up here. I got it for you. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, no, nah, this is not rocking. Mm -hmm. He's so upset that he's shaking and trembling. He about to put some work in. Go ahead. Wherefore he ran and uh -huh. slew him upon the altar. Right. You got to go first. Before I put my hands on any creek or anybody else, you got to go. Tom she. Also the king's commissioner who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time. Now he killing everybody. He said the dude that came over here telling me that I should do this to be a friend of the king, you got to go. Tom she. He killed him at that time and the altar he pulled down. Breaking it down. Let's go. 
Thus dealt he zealously for the law of God. Right. Like as Phineas did unto Zamri, the son of Salon. Right. Just like Phineas did to uh, uh, Zinri. Y'all remember the, uh, the, the, the history about Phineas when the children of Israel was in repentance mode for the atrocity that they did? Yeah. And the priest, Aharon, was beseeching the creator. And here come this dude. Zimri, big shot, Simeonite, with this foreign woman stepping over people, probably taking her into the uh, tent. Pinkos was like, nah, how dare you? How dare you? Wow. And he went and he killed both of them, and it was counted for righteousness, and he was given an everlasting priesthood. Wow. These, this is the zeal that causes the creator to look at you. You know what I mean? These are the defining moments that actually cause the creator to look at you. These are the moments that we have to learn how to take advantage of. Even if you outnumbered, you never outnumbered when it comes to the creator because if you're doing that which is right, God is the majority. And that's how you got to feel. Even if you got to die for it. If you ain't got nothing to die for, you ain't got nothing to live for. Oh. And that's how we have to look at this thing. We have to have so much zeal about this Torah that nobody can tell you or cause you to bend the fold when it comes to doing God's commandments. This is what our forefathers died for. When we say them prayers on Yom Kippur and we talking, it says, if not for me, do it for the sake of those that died. For the Lord's, for your holy Lord's. If not for me, do it for the sake of those that were killed for upholding your high testimonies. Right. This is how we got to look at this. Man. It's not a game. This is the stories that you tell your children. This is when you sit them down. Hanukkah, yeah, this is the memorial of this. Mm -hmm. When you sit them down, if you're going to give them something, give them something that means something. Give them something that's in memorial of this lesson to keep them steadfast in what we do. That's what this is about. It's a joyful time when we get to the end of the story, but the first part ain't about joy. Yeah. The first part is about sacrifice and bloodshed. Tom Sheik. Verse 27. Uh -huh. And Mattathias cried throughout the, throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, right. Whosoever is zealous of the law and maintaineth the covenant, let him follow me. Dig it. If so, you if you jealous, if you zealous for God, you know what a zealot is? A zealot is the one that's going to kill them violators. Mm -hmm. That's what a zealot is. A zealot is the one that when he get pissed off or she get pissed off when she see people take God's word for granted. That's a zealot. The ones that are, are sworn to uphold the law, statutes, and commandments. That's how you got to feel, man. Especially in this day and time. Because this is a Hellenistic period that we live in right now. Everything is Hellenized. The over-sexualization of, 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 of any kind of sales or marketing. Everything has to do with sex. Everything has to do with same-sex relations. Everything is about murder and promiscuousness and all this kind of stuff. This is a hell in house period. These are the things that our forefathers died before they fell into. Right. Talk to you. So he and his son fled into the mountain right. and left all that they had ever had in the city. Right. Then many that saw after justice and judgment went down into the wilderness. Right, so there, because after they after they caught them bodies, yeah. it's like, nah, we can't stay in the, we can't stay in this town no more. We gotta stay in the stronghold. We gotta get to the woods. Why? Because guess what? It ain't so easy for people to come up in there. If you're in a town, they might come down there, surround the whole town, and kill everybody. No, we got to get up out of here. And remember, we dealing with the Greek army. Yeah, we're dealing with a Greek army that they know how to fight. They perfected the phalanx, yeah. that line fighting. So, you know, he's taking, he's using wisdom. 
Tell them, see. Both they and their children and right. their wives and their cattle right. because afflictions increased so upon them. But it sounds like David, when he became David, Malek Dawi, when he went and dwelt in a stronghold, when everybody who was in debt or who was unsatisfied with the current government, they came and assembled themselves to him. Yeah. Now they're doing the same thing with um, uh, Mattathias. Yeah. Tell them, Verse 31. Yes, sir. Now, when it was told the king's servants and our host that was at Jerusalem in the city of David, mm -hmm. that certain men who had broken the king's commandment mm -hmm. were going down to secret places in the wilderness, mm -hmm. they pursued after them a great number. Right. So the king is not with, he's on it. But you got to remember, they're not at the point where they like a, 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 a small sleeper cell right now. It's not like they 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 looked upon as this grand army right now. They're a small sleeper sleeper cell. They wreaking havoc in certain areas. You know they going up in they in the mountains. You know a lot of people you know are not paying them too much attention, but they do want to squash this rebellion. Tom she. They pursued after them a great number, and had overtaken them. They encamped against them and made war against them on a shot by day. Right. And they said unto them, let that which ye have done hitherto suffice. Mm -hmm. Come forth and do according to the commandment of the king, and ye shall live. Right. But they said, we will not come forth, neither will we do the king's commandments. Right. To profane the shot by day. Right. So then they gave them a battle with all speed. Howbeit they answered them not, neither cast their stone at them. Right. So what we got to understand is that a, a bunch of Israelites started fleeing into the wilderness, mm -hmm. into the mountains, into these... Uh, treat up foresty areas to get away from the towns because the towns were being rushed by these uh, uh, Hellenistic people. Uh -huh. So people started going into the wilderness. So because of that, now you got these Greeks who are pursuing whoever is rebelling against the word of the king. So they went up on one group and they went to them and they said to them, they said, listen, get ready to fight. And they went in, they fought these people, Israelites, but the Israelites refused to fight them because it was the Shabbat. They refused to fight because it was the Shabbat. So they gave up the ghost that day. They all died. It was a massacre. You know what I mean? So go ahead, read some more. And we'll get to the slide in a minute. Mm -hmm. Howbeit they answered the, no verse 37, but said, Let us die all in our innocency. Heaven and earth shall testify for us, right? That ye put us to death wrongfully. So they rose up against them in battle on the shot by day, mm -hmm. and they slew them with their wives and children and their cattle to number to the number of a thousand people, right? Now, when Mattathias and his friends understood, right? So Mattathias and them is like, Man, y'all heard what happened to the brothers. The sisters over there, mm -hmm. you see how they ran up in there and they killed all the people on the shop out? That ain't happening to us. Tell them she. Oh, and the friends understood their love. They mourned for them right sore. Mm -hmm. And one of them said to another, if we all do as our brethren have done and fight not for our lives and laws against the heathen, they will now quickly rule this side of the earth. At that time, therefore, they decreed saying, they decreed saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Shabbat day, we will fight against him. Dig it. So at this time, they like, listen, they come on us on the Shabbat. We're not going out like them. We fighting. But these were calls that were made by the high priest or by the priest. The priest said, listen, Mattathias, he's an authority. He said, nah, we fighting. We, we going to bang out. They come at us on the Shabbat, we going to win in. And this has been something that we've held fast to. Listen, you don't want to battle no Israelites. Even on the Shabbat, we're going to give it to you. Why? Because the Torah is about life. It's not about dying. It's about preserving life. We do Torah so that we can live. If somebody coming to take your life, then guess what? By all means, whether it's the Shabbat, Yom Kippur, you better protect yourself so that you can live. The dead don't praise the Lord. So they made a decision. They said, no, nah, we fighting on the Shabbat. We fight." Tumshi. Neither will we die as our brethren that we that were murdered in the secret places. Right. 
Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians. Right. So Assyrians is the term that they use here is Assyrian, but in Hebrew it's called Hasidim or Hasidim. The same word that's used that Jews take today, you know, because Hasidic Jews, it's the same term. The, the, the word actually means pious in Hebrew. But we know it wasn't the Hasid, Hasid Jews. This is a group of people named Hasidim, the pious. And they came over to join on with Mattathias. Mm -hmm. Tom Shee. At that time, we decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Shabbat day, we will fight against him. Neither will we all die, and our brethren that were murdered in the secret places. Then came unto him a company of Assyrians, right. who were mighty men of Israel, even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. Also, all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them. Right. So, anybody, because they knew that Mattathias and them, or the priest Mattathias, they was popping at the time and they was really doing what they needed to do. People wanted to be a part of this. Why? Because this looked like something that God would prosper. You had right men who forsook evil in a time of evil and was never scared of evil. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I will say this, that I want us to understand. You know, I was, I remember, I'll never forget, I was maybe about 14. 14 years old, and my Abba told me, he said, he said, um, he said, how can the righteous allow the, if the righteous are more mighty, if the wicked are more mightier than the righteous, then we subject it to wickedness. Mm -hmm. So that means the righteous got to be more mighty than the wicked. Yeah. So that means that guess what? You need to exercise. You need to learn a martial art. You need to learn how to fight. You need to get your body strong and do things to protect yourself and to preserve your life because there's wicked people out there that train. And if they train harder than you, then we subjected to wickedness. So this is why it's important. As righteous men and women, you got to stay strong. Take care of yourself. Run. Exercise. Do things like that. Why? Because if you don't and the wicked... Pursue, then guess what? You subjected to their wickedness. Mm -hmm. Tom Sheep. Verse 44. Yes, sir. So they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger, uh -huh. and the wicked men in their wrath. So they killing people. Yeah. Mattathias and his crew is killing people. Tom mm -hmm. Sheep. But the rest fled to the heathen for, for secure. Mm -hmm. Then Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. Mm -hmm. And what children soever they found within the coast within the coast of Israel. So now they so now they kind of deep. Now they got a host with them. Mm -hmm. So now they feeling a little, you know, uh they they got a little more testicular fortitude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They ready. Mm -hmm. They going shaking down stuff, they breaking down them altars, they going along the coast and, and finding children. If they ain't circumcised, they circumcising them. Why? Because it became a death penalty for any woman to circumcise her baby. Not only that, but they was hanging babies that were circumcised. In chapter 1. Tom she. Within the coast of Israel were circumcised those they circumcised valiantly. They pursued also after them the proud men right. and, the, and the work prospered in their hand. Right, so they pursued after them proud men. Yeah. Look, they even, even the sellouts from Jerusalem and from uh, those are the ones that they were trying to kill too. It wasn't just about the Greeks. Anybody who stood and opposed the laws, statutes, and commandments of the king, it was curtains for you at that time. It's curtains for you. Listen, if you were somebody who spoke wrong about the laws, statutes, and commandments, because it's a war period, you can't allow that. You know, if you're a federal prisoner, in the United States of America, and a war break out, and we are invaded, you know the rule is to kill you in your cell? Why? Because as a federal prisoner, you're an enemy to the state. And that sound wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
Because guess what? This is what the Maccabees are saying. Listen, if you talk wrong about the law during this time of our uh, uh, of our uh, hardship, you got to go. Tom she. They pursued also after the proud men and the, and the work prospered in their hand. Right. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And out of the hand of the kings, neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. Bang it. Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now I have pride and rebuke. Hold up, hold up. Now this right here is epic. Mm -hmm. You got to listen to what Mattathias is saying. Priest Mattathias is saying. Because what happens is he know he fighting his life. Yeah. His life was spent fighting. So now his years are numbered, or his time is numbered, and he want to sit his children down, his sons down, and talk to them and give them a charge so that they follow. Mm. And he's going to set his house in order. And whoever goes against this is a rebel. Because this is the way his fa the father is setting his house in order. Tom she. Now has pride and rebuke, right? gotten strength. In the, in the time of destruction and a wrath of indignation. Right. Now, therefore, my sons, be zealous for the Lord and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Right. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Right. So shall you receive great honor mm -hmm. and an everlasting name. Right. Was not Abraham found faithful in the temptation? Right. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness? Now, not only that, he's giving them the breakdown of their people mm. and examples of where they come from in order to strengthen them because they got a hell of a battle ahead of them. Mm. So he want them charged up. Mm -hmm. He want them ready to rock and roll. Tom Sheep. Verse 53. Yes, sir. Joseph in the time of his distress. That's right. The commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. Right. Phineas, our father, and being zealous and, and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Peace, That's right. Oh, they say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, when they say Jesus, it's referring to Joshua, Joshua yeah. because it's the same name. Yeah. But like we said, this is a translation of that kind of text, Tom yeah. Joshua, for fulfilling the word, mm -hmm. was made a judge in Israel. Mm -hmm. Caleb, for bearing witness before the congregation, received the heritage of the land. That's right. David, for being merciful, mm -hmm. possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Right. Elias, for being zealous and fervent of, for the law, was taken up into heaven. Right. Elias, he's talking about Elijah. Elijah. But see, the thing is, is he's setting his by name or his sons in order. Guess what? Guess what? When you got a house full of sons, it may be issues sometimes. But guess what? The cause is more important than any personal thing. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because we got a mission. Our mission is to uphold this banner to make sure that we prosper, to make sure that we save this nation. Mm -hmm. Tom Sheep. He said, Hananiah, Zaria, and Mishael, mm -hmm. by believing by believing was saved out of the flame. Right. Daniel for his innocence. And they was young. Hananiah, Azariah, he's giving them example. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. That's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. That's their Hebrew names. Yeah. They were saved. They was young men and said, nah, we ain't eating none of that. We don't eat that. Tom Sheik. Daniel for his innocence, he was delivered from, from the mouth of lions. Right. And thus consider you throughout all the ages right. that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Right. Fear not, then the words of a sinful then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be done in worms. Right. He said, well, hold on, read that part again. Listen to this. Because what happens is this is G talk right here. Yeah. Tell me she. Fear not the words of a sinful man. He said, fear not the words of a sinful man. I don't care how gangster they talk, mm -hmm. how gorilla they talk. Fear not the words of a sinful man. Go ahead. Because well, he's going to die soon too. He's a man at the end of the day. He relieved himself just like you. Don't let nobody shake you up. That's what he's telling his son. Tom Sheep. Today he shall be lifted up. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow he shall not be found. Right. Because he is returned into his dust. Right. And, he is, and his thought is come to nothing. Dig it. Wherefore ye my sons. Be valiant and show yourselves men mm -hmm. in, the, in the behalf of the law. He said, be valiant and show yourselves men. At the end of the day, be a man. Yeah. Be a man. Tell she. For by it, 
for by it ye shall obtain glory. Mm -hmm. And behold, I know that your brother Simeon is a man of counsel. Right, so this is how he put in his sons in order because he knows the characteristic of each one of them. Right. So he knows where each one would fit in. So he's putting them in order according to their abilities. So he said, I know Shimon, he's a man of counsel. What did he say about Shimon? Give air to him always. Listen to him. He might not be the one that box the best, but he know this. So listen to him. Take counsel with him. What did it say? He shall be a father unto you. He's going to be like the father when I'm gone. Pay attention to him. Leadership all the time don't mean that you the toughest. You know, there were men in David's army that were no joke. That wasn't no joke. And I'm not trying to belittle King David at all. But as he started to get older, he couldn't even move with them a lot of the times. And they told him, listen, you can't go out the war no more. Because if something happened to you, it said, let the light go out in Israel. So it ain't about you being on the scene all the time. And this is what people have to understand. Everybody has a position. You don't have to be a tough guy. Let the tough guys be the tough guys. If you can come up with strategy and thought, then that's where you fit in. But that don't take away from your manhood. Because at the end of the day, you're willing to die for the cause. You just got to get in where you fit in. Tom C. As for Judas Maccabeus, he had been mighty and strong right. from his youth. He oh. said, listen, this dude, Judas Maccabeus, that's my son that's been hardcore ever since he was a baby. And he's been that way up until now. He's going to be y'all's general. But that don't take away from Simon or Shimon. Tom Sheik. Let him be your captain. And fight the battle of the people. I mean, take also and take also unto you all those that have observed the law, right? And avenge you the wrong of your people, right? Recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the law, right? So he so he blessed them and was gathered to, and was gathered to his father. And that's that day he made two heads of his household, right? But that two heads of that household, he chose that for balance. That's wisdom. Why? Because guess what? The general, you got to listen to what he's saying too. Why? Because he's in the field. Tom Sheep. Verse 70. Right. And, he, and he died in the hundred in the hundred forty in six years. Uh -huh. And his sons buried him in the in the sepulchres of his father at Modin. Right. And all Yeshayel made great lamentation for him. Right. Chapter 3. Yes. Then his son Judas called Maccabeus rose up in his stead. And all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father. That's right. And they fought with cheerfulness in the that? battle of Yeshua. It wasn't no, it wasn't no hate. This is the team. Right. This is how we moving. Right. If you listen, let me tell you something. If you can't stand to see your own win, we ain't going nowhere. If you can't stand to see your own win, we're not going nowhere. Let me tell you something. Even if you may have a personal issue, don't hate. Don't hate. When you see somebody else triumphing, then and, and you know that your issue is personal, their triumph is a proclamation. Their triumph is a glory to the king of the universe, which y'all might have might be personal, but their triumph is 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 attributed to the king of the universe. Don't hate. Because if one of us win, we all win in our right state of mind. That's how we got to look at this thing. Tom Sheep. And that's why the Assyrians came to the Maccabees. Mm -hmm. That's why the Assyrians came, or the Kassidim came to the Maccabees. They could have said, nah, we ain't down with them. They going to fight over there. We're going to do our thing over here. Mm -hmm. Nah, together. That's how we win. Tom Sheik. Verse 3. Right. So he got his people great honor right. and put on a breastplate as a giant. Right. And girt his 
and girls roar like harness about him. Mm -hmm. And he made battles, protecting the host with his work, with his sword. Right. In his acts, he was like a lion, and like a lion's well, roaring for his prey. Yeah, Maccabee mean him. Mm. Tell she. Well, he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burned up those that vexed his people. Now, he followed people. He was like the drop squad. Yeah. I'm going to find whoever is doing my people greasy, and we going to get them. Yeah. It said he pursued people, Tom She. Wherefore the wicked struck the fear. Right. And all the workers of iniquity were troubled. Uh -huh. Because salvation prospered in his hands. Right. He grieved also the living king that made Jacob glad with his acts. David. And his memorial is blessed forever. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he went through the cities of Judah, destroying the ungodly out of them. Right. And turning away with wrath from Israel. Right. So that he was renowned. So that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth. Right. And he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Right. Then Apollonius. They said he received unto him such as was ready. So the people that came to him was ready to die. Yeah. You know, like Biggie song, like Biggie album, ready to die. Right. You couldn't be down with him unless you was ready to die. Because that's how they fought their battles. Tom Shee. Then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together, right, and the great host out of Samaria to to fight against Israel. Right. So Apollonius, um, was somebody who fought against the Maccabees, and there was a famous battle that the Maccabees felt uh, for. It's the uh, battle of the ascent of Labona, and the battle, uh. Was a was a, it was a big deal because it was an uphill battle. It says this. It says the battle of ascent. It says the battle with Apollonius was the first battle fought between the Maccabees and the Seleucid Empire in one sixty in one sixty seven or one sixty six BCE. It says Jewish forces. We know why they keep saying Jewish because they're referring to the Yehudim or the Judeans. Uh, it says Judean forces were led by Judas Maccabeus, and the Seleucid army force was under the command of Apollonius, described by Josephus as the strategos or the general of this uh, Samaritan forces. In the earliest stage of the Maccabean rebellion, Judah had a small band of guerrilla combat units in the hills of northern Judea in southern Samaria. Apollonius was sent with a local Samaritan army to link up with the Seleucid forces from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this, is that the reason why they were so effective in fighting against the Seleucid army is because they didn't fight an open plain battlefield. They fought a guerrilla warfare type of battle. Whereas the Greeks were really, really good at fighting plain battle because they had the battle technique called the phalanx. Now, if you fight a straight line against the Greeks, nine times out of 10, they're going to defeat you. But guerrilla warfare means I'm going to ambush you. And this is what Judah Maccabee was known for, ambushing, guerrilla warfare. Tell me. So it said, the Apollonians gathered the Gentiles together and the great host out of Samaria to fight against Israel. Yeah. Right. Which thing when Judas perceived, he went forth to meet him. Right. And he and so he smote him and slew him. Mm -hmm. Many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Right. Wherefore Judas took their spoils. Mm -hmm. And Apollonius swore also. And therewith he fought all his life. He embarrassed them. He embarrassed them. He took all that stuff because at that time, when men went to war, they went to war decked out. Mm. So you put on your jewelry to go to war. That's how men went to war. You know, when, if you kill somebody, you spoiled them. You took their armor, you took their jewelry, their rings, you know what I mean? Their, their, their um, gauntlets, things of that nature. Um, one of the things is that I really wanted to talk about was who was Flavius Josephus, because a lot of the accounts of the Maccabees in real time, I mean, the, the real history of it is from uh, Flavius Josephus. And um, he was a traitor. Um, this is an actual statue of a black guy who was in Rome. So this is one of 
another one of my attempts to uh, to blackwash history back to the way it was. So I just used this one because it just looked appropriate. I'm not saying that this was the actual Flavius Josephus, but it was you know a, a Roman depiction of a black man in Rome. So I just took it. Um, Flavius Josephus, it says, was a Judean historian who lived both in Jerusalem and in Rome in the first century CE. So we're talking about the first century, the first hundred years of the century, of the common era, right? And he wrote extensively on the history of his people and the first Judean revolt, which is during the time of the Maccabees and, 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 and other stuff like that. He was raised in the upper class family whose father was more likely, who more, 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 whose father likely had a connection with the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin was the group of men that actually presided over Judea at the time. And said, whose mother claimed Hesmonian royal lineage. So his mother was from the same line as the Hesmonians. This is one of the reasons why a lot of his writings are about the Maccabees, right? Just to give some uh, information on him. Um, it says, his assignment to be a military general in charge of the defense of Galilee resulted in his capture, right? He was captured by the Romans in 67 CE. As a prisoner, he decided to help persuade the Jews to surrender Jerusalem to save the city and Herod's temple from certain destruction. So when he was captured, uh, because he was part of the defense of Galilee, he was captured by the Rome, Romans. The Romans then put him to work for them. And he came back to the city and he tried to persuade him to give up the city so that the temple wouldn't be destroyed and that they would accept Roman rule. Um, he failed to persuade the defense defenders with the speech from the city walls during the siege. And thus in the end, he was perceived as aiding and abetting the enemy. It did not help his reputation that he adopted the conquering family's name as a part of his own and lived at their paid expense in Rome for many years afterwards. So it sounds like a setup. It sounds like a seller. Mm -hmm. He's probably more than likely is a seller, but that still does not take away from the contributions that he made to history. Talk to you. It says, now, now when Seron, a prince of the army of Syria, uh -huh. heard, heard say that Judas had gathered unto him a multitude and a company of faithful uh -huh. to go out with him to war, right. he said, I will give me a name and honor in the kingdom. Right, because now everybody who want to be down, they want to show and prove that, listen, I can stomp this, this little uh Maccabee thing out. Mm -hmm. So now everybody want to get in. Everybody want a piece of what's going on. They want a piece of the action because it's right now it's just to get a rep. Tell she. He said, I will give me a name and honor in the kingdom, for I will go fight with Judas and them that are with him. Right. Who despise the king's commandment. Right. So he made him ready to go up, and there went him a mighty host of the ungodly to help him. Right. And to be avenged of the children of Israel. Right. And when he came near to to the going up of Beth Horan, mm -hmm. Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. Right. Who that who, when they saw the host come to meet him, said to said unto Judas, How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so a great such a great multitude and so strong? So now Judas people is questioning. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, this is a lot of people. Yeah. What are we gonna do? And what's his reply? Seeing seeing we are ready to faint. With fasting all this day, right? Because they just been bad. They, 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 they haven't stopped, right? So his people is tired. They hungry. They've been fasting. Tom she. Unto whom do this answer? It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. Wow. And with the God of heaven, mm -hmm. it is all one That's to right. deliver with the great multitude or a small company. That's right. For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of a host, mm -hmm. but strength cometh from heaven. That's right. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us, right. and our wives and our children and to spoil us. See this attitude that he has? This is the attitude that we have to have mm -hmm. in this captivity. Mm -hmm. Regardless of who it is, you're not going to beat me. 
And I'm not just talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm talking about emotionally. Yeah. I'm talking about intellectually. You're not going to beat us. Yeah. No, you're not going to beat us. We blessed by the king of heaven and earth. Spirit that we have. When God said he poured his spirit on us, people don't go into situations with the same spirit that we go into situations with. No. Don't let them shake you up. We serve the king of the universe who is the sole controller of all things and everything. Our king, he said, it's, it's saying in the book, it's a small thing for the creator to make a poor man rich or a rich man poor. He controlled things. Tom Sheep. But we fight for our lives and our Lord. Yes, sir. We're for the Lord himself. will overthrow them before our face. Right. And as for you, be not afraid of them. That's right. Now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt, he leaped suddenly upon them. Uh -huh. And so Saran and his host was overthrown before him. We're not going to sit here and talk to y'all. Yeah. We about this business. We're going to do it. Yeah. He said he leaped on them. Mm -hmm. People don't expect that. That's the spirit that you got to have. You know, uh, uh, I was talking with a guy, um, a guy um, that I know used to live in the building with me. And um, and uh, you know, a young boy had challenged him to a fight. So I'm like, bro, like you 30 something years old, this dude is like a good 17, 18. He like, yeah, so I threw up my hands. I said, you threw up your hands? You throw up your hands? Listen, by you throwing up your hands, that's a sign of equality. Like, you're showing somebody that you're equal. We not going to flank each other if, if I don't feel that you equal. The same way this man right here, he didn't hesitate. He didn't throw up his hands. He jumped on them. That's confidence. Yeah. It's a difference. Some people may understand what I'm saying. Some people may not understand what I'm saying. Certain people, you don't need to throw up your hands for. You just jump on them. And this is what Judah Maccabee did. He jumped on them. Tom Sheep. And they, and they pursued them from going down of Beth Haron onto the plain, where, where were slain about 800 men of them. Mm -hmm. And the residue fled into the land of the Philistines. Right. Then began the fear of Judas and, this, and his brethren. Right. And exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. Right. In so much as his fame came unto the king, and all nations talked of the battles of Judas. Mm -hmm. Now, when King Antiochus heard these things, mm -hmm. he was full of indignation. Now the king is hearing about this. Now he mad. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Yeah. How y'all letting these rebels get the best of us? King mad. He's Antiochus. Antiochus is the same Antiochus that ran into Egypt and put Ptolemy to flight. Mm -hmm. He tight. Tom she. Wherefore he set and gathered together all the forces of his ground, even a very strong army. He opened also his treasure and gave his soldiers pay for, for a year. Right. Commanding them to be ready whensoever he should need them. Right, right. Nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed mm -hmm. and that the tributes in the country were small because of the Dissension of and plague. Right, he's talking about. Listen, I gotta feed these soldiers now. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. Listen, we gonna keep these dudes on standby, just in case. So keep feeding them. But he ain't realized that the money is starting to. He's starting to lose money that way. Yeah. So now what he got to do? He got to figure out another way to get this bread. Some shit. Which he had brought up upon the land and taken away the laws which he had been old of old time. Mm -hmm. He fit. He feared that he should not be able to bear the charges any longer. Right. Nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before. For he had a for he had abundant above the kings that were before him. Right. Wherefore, being greatly perplexed in his mind, he determined to go into Persia, mm -hmm. there to take the tributes of the country right. and to gather much money. Right. So what he's doing is he said, now I gotta go, I gotta re-up. Yeah. I gotta go get this money from on the other side of Persia so that we are fortified. So he had a mission. He couldn't deal with the situation in Jerusalem like how he thought he would be able to. Tom Shea. But this is God working. Mm -hmm. This is God working. Just as he worked with, with, with the Assyrians 
or he he tripped them up in the past and he tripped up uh the Egyptians and the Babylonians in the past. He did the same thing with them. Tell me. So he left Messias, mm -hmm. a nobleman and of the blood royal to over to oversee the affairs of the king from the river Euphrates into the borders of Egypt. Right. And to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he delivered unto him the half of his forces and the elephants and, and the elephants and gave him charge of all things that he that he would have done. Right. And also concerning them that dwelt in Judas and Jerusalem. Right. To wit, that he should send an army against them to destroy and root out the strength of Israel. Yeah. Right. And the remnant of Jerusalem to take away their memorial from that place. Mm -hmm. And that he should place strangers in all their quarters right. and divide their land by lot. Mm -hmm. So the king took the half of the forces that remained and departed from, from Antioch, his royal city, right. the hundred and forty and seventh year. Mm -hmm. And having passed the river Euphrates, he went through the high countries. Mm -hmm. Then Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of the Romanus, mm -hmm. and Nicona, mm -hmm. and Georgia's mighty man of the king's friends. Right. And with him he sent forty thousand footmen mm -hmm. and seven thousand horsemen right. to go into the land of Judah and to destroy it, as mm -hmm. the king commanded. Right. So they went forth with all their power and came and pitched by Emmaus in the plain country. Right. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy to buy the children of Israel for slaves. So what they said, they anticipating the destruction of this place. They're like, oh stuff. There's going to be some slaves for sale today. Yeah. So they ready. They, they are ready anticipating a defeat of us as a people. So what happened? Talk, let's talk about it. A power also of Syria and of the land of the Philistines joined themselves unto them. Right. Now when Judas and his brethren saw that miseries were, mul miseries were multiplied, mm -hmm. that the forces didn't encamp themselves into their borders. Mm -hmm. they do, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and to utterly abolish them. They said one to another, let us restore the, the decayed estate of our people mm -hmm. and let us fight for our people in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Then was the congregation gathered together mm -hmm. that they might be ready for battle mm -hmm. and that they might pray and ask mercy and compassion. So what they going to do, they going back to the essence. Mm -hmm. They going back and putting together that which was broken down. This is what Hanukkah is about. Mm -hmm putting what the heathen broke up back together, the redemption, the, 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 the rebuild, the rededication of our temple. Yeah. Tell me, she, let's read some more. Because they know this is the source. This is where we get our, our power from. We get our power not from a place, but by being connected with the eternal of heaven and earth. Don't you know that when we read last week's Torah portion and it talked about that place Bethel where Yaakov went, he laid his head down and he saw the angels going up, ascending and, and descending on that ladder. That was the location of the temple. The creator was showing our father, Yaakov, this is where it's going to be. Yeah. This is where man's connection with God is going to be. So what they doing, they're fighting for that cause. They're fighting to put that back together. Yeah. It's not a game. There's no inconsistencies in our people and the way in which we do things. This is a recipe from God yeah. that cannot be disputed. Tell me. Verse 45. Yes, sir. Now Jerusalem lay void as the wilderness. Mm -hmm. There was none of her children that went in or out. Right. The sanctuary also was trodden. Down and aliens kept the stronghold. Right. The heathen had their habitation in that place. Right. And joy was taken from Jacob. Uh huh. And the pipe, and the pipe with the harp ceased. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Mosphor mm -hmm. over against Jerusalem, mm -hmm. where Mosphor was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Right. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and right. cast ashes upon their heads. And right. Their clothes. Because now what they're going to do first before they cleanse anything is they're going to do a spiritual cleaning. Mm -hmm. Clean themselves up first. See, it's a preparation. Everything has an order of operation. Mm -hmm. And this is what I thought. This is why even when we pray, you know, there's an order of operation in praying. 
The first thing you want to do before you start asking the creator for anything is ask for forgiveness. Yeah. So that when you stand before the king, you stand before him semi-clean. You want to be found acceptable before you go before the eternal of heaven and earth. And this is what this is the recipe that they follow. Tell me. Verse 48. Yes, sir. And laid upon the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Uh -huh. They brought also the priest's garment and the first fruits and the types. Mm -hmm. And the Nazarites they stirred up, mm -hmm. who had a who had accomplished their days. So they brought up Nazarites that stirred up who had accomplished their time. So, and that's another thing. A Nazarite vow is not something that you take forever. You take a Nazarite vow for a certain amount of time. When your vow is fulfilled, then guess what? Then you come up. And that which you grew is then cut. It's not a forever thing. You're not a Nazarite forever. Ain't nobody a Nazarite forever. Tom she. Then cried with they cried they with a loud voice toward heaven, saying, mm -hmm. What shall we do with these? And whither shall we carry them away? Right. But our sanctuary is trodden down and profane, mm -hmm. and our priests are in heaviness and brought low. Right. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. Right. What things they imagine against us, thou knowest. How shall we be able to stand up against them, except thou, O God, be our help? Then sound the day with trumpets and cry with a loud voice. Right. And after this, Judas ordained captains over the people, even captains over thousands and captains over hundreds mm -hmm. and over fifties and over tens. Right. But as for such as were building houses or had betrothed wives or were planting vineyards or right. were fearful, right. those he commanded that they should return every man to his own house, right. according to the law, mm -hmm. so that the camp removed and pitched upon the side the south side of uh, Emmaus. Right. And Judah said, Arm yourselves and be valiant men, and see that ye be in readiness against the morning, right. that ye may fight with, the, with these nations mm -hmm. that are assembled together against us to destroy us in our sanctuary. That's right. For it is better for us to die in battle mm -hmm. and to behold the calamities of our people in right. our sanctuary. Sometimes the anticipation of death is worse than death itself. Mm. Mm. I'd rather die than to endure what they going to put on us, living. Yeah. you rather die than to be a Roman slave. you rather die than to be a Greek slave. Because those was different kind of people. Yeah. Their culture, their atrocities, what they expected of, of, of servitude was something that was way beyond us as a people. Yeah. Nah. So listen, before we see our little ones go into captivity, we going to die here. Trying. Tom she. Nevertheless, as the will of God is in heaven, so let him do. Right. Chapter four. Uh huh. Then took Georgia's five thousand footmen and a thousand of the best horsemen and uh -huh. removed out of the camp by night. Uh -huh. To end to the end, he might rush in upon the camp of the Jews. Right. So he's playing uh, uh, guerrilla warfare too. So he like, listen, we just gonna move out of here. Blah, 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 blah. We gonna ambush them. The same way they've been trying to ambush us. Go ahead. And he smite them suddenly. And the men of the fortress were his guides. Mm -hmm. Now when Judas heard thereof, he removed, he, he himself removed, and the valiant men with him, that he might smite the king's army, which was at Emmaus. Right. While as yet the forces were disappeared from were dispersed from the camp. Right. In the mean season, come Georgia by night into the camp of Judas. And when he found no man there, he sought them in the mountains for for said he. These fellows flee from us. But as soon as it was day, Judas showed himself in a plane with 3,000 men who nevertheless had neither armor nor swords to their to their minds. Right, they came, they came out like, listen, we out here, what's up? It says they had armor, neither sword in their hand. This is a ruse. Mm -hmm. Tom Sheep. And they saw the camp of the heathen, and it was strong and well harnessed, and compared round about the, with the horsemen. And these were expert of war. Right. And th then said Judas to the men that were with him, Fear ye not their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their assault. Mm -hmm. Remember how our fathers were delivered in the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and Pharaoh pursued them with, no, with an army. Right. Now therefore let us cry unto heaven, mm -hmm. and peradventure the Lord will have mercy upon us, right. and remember the covenant of our fathers, right. and destroy this host before our, the face of, before our face this day. Right. That so all the heathen may know that there is one who delivereth and saveth Israel. Mm -hmm. Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them. Mm -hmm. Wherefore they went out of the camp to battle. Right. But they 
that were with Judas sounded their trumpets. Mm -hmm. So they joined battle, and the heathen being discomfited fled into the plain. Albeit all the high most of them were slain with the sword. Right. But they pursued them unto Gazira and unto the plains of Edomia. Listen, Maccabee, Judas Maccabee wasn't no joke. Mm -hmm. And he was not playing with people. And the thing was, is that the pride of these nations is what caused their demise. Because they thought they had it in a bag so much to the point that they let everything go and gave us an opportunity. The creator is great. All praises to our king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tom let's read some more. Let's end it out. Let's get into the actual commemoration. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that there were slain of them upon 3,000 men. Mm -hmm. This done, Judas returned again with his host from pursuing them. Right. And said to the people, be not greedy of the spoils, inasmuch as there is a battle before us. And Georgius and his host, and hear by us in the mountains. But stand ye now against our enemies and overcome them. Mm -hmm. After this, you may boldly take the spoils. Mm -hmm. And Judas was yet speaking these words. They appeared a part of them looking out at the mountain. Right. Who, who, when they perceived that the Jews had put their host to flight and were burning the tents, for the smoke that was seen declared what was done. Mm -hmm. When therefore they perceived these things, they were so afraid, and seeing also the host of Judas in the plain ready to fight. Right. They fled everyone into the land of the strangers. Mm -hmm. Then Judas returned to the spoil of the tents. Uh -huh. Wherefore they got much gold and silver, and blue silk, and purple of the sea, right. and great riches. Uh -huh. After this, they went home and, and sung a song of thanksgiving, right. and praised the Lord in heaven. Amen. Because it is good, because this mercy endure forever. That's right. Thus Israel had a great deliverance that day. Mm -hmm. Now all the strangers that had escaped came and told Lysias, what had happened, who, who, when he heard thereof, was confounded and, and discouraged. Right. Because neither such because neither such things as he would were done unto Israel. Right. Nor such things as the king commanded him would come to pass. Right. The next year, there, therefore, following Ulysses, gathered together three score thousand choice men of foot mm -hmm. and five thousand horsemen, that he might subdue them. So they came into Ed Edumia mm -hmm. and pitched their tents at Besura, mm -hmm. and Judas met them. And met with them with ten thousand men. Now he he's dead. Mm -hmm. He he doing ten thousand mm -hmm. right now. Go ahead. And when he saw that the mighty army, he prayed and said, "Blessed art thou, Savior of Israel, who did quell the violence of the mighty man yeah. by the hand of thy servant David, mm -hmm. and gave us the host of strangers into the hands of Jonathan, the son of Saul, right. and his armor bearer. Shut up this army in the hand of thy people, Israel, right. and and let them be confounded in their power, horsemen." Right. Make them to be of no courage and cause the boldness of their strength to fall away and let them quake at their destruction. Cast them down with the sword of them that love thee and let all those that know thy name praise thee with thanksgiving. Right. So they joined battle when there were slain of the host of, of Lysias about 5,000 men. Even before them, they were slain. Now, when Lysias saw his army was, was put to flight and the manliness of Judah's soldiers and how they were ready either to live or die valiantly. Right. He went into Antiochia and gathered together a company of strangers. Mm -hmm. And having made his army greater than it was, he put he proposed to came uh, he proposed to come again unto Judea. Right. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomforted. Right. Let us go up to cleanse and, dele and de dedicate the sanctuary. Right. Upon this, all the hosts assembled themselves together right. and went up into Mount Sion. Right. And when they saw that the sanctuary, when they saw the sanctuary desolate and the mm -hmm. altar profane, right. and the gates burnt up, and the shrubs growing in the courts as in a forest, mm -hmm. or in the mountains, yea, and the priests and chambers pulled down, they rent their clothes and made great lamentation and cast ashes upon their heads, mm -hmm. and fell down flat to the ground upon their faces, and blew in along with the trumpets, mm -hmm. and cried toward heaven. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary. Right. So he chose priests in blameless con conversation. Right. Such as had pleasure in the Lord. Now, the Maccabees, if you go back to the beginning of the lesson, and anyone who has a, a question about the um, authority of their lineage as far as Hesmoniah is concerned, go back to the beginning of the lesson. But the Maccabees themselves were from the Hesmonian line. Actual descendants of priests. Mm -hmm. 
So when he said that he chose blameless men, men of blameless conversation, yeah. these are people who are a cut above other people when it came to holiness. Because why? Wow, we know that, guess what? As a priest, the responsibility, who's going to preside over this? There's a responsibility on this. That's a little different. When everybody else go out the party, you're not going out the party. You have to refrain from certain things on the strength of the office that you hold. So it says he chose men of blameless conversation. Mm -hmm. And they're getting back into what was initially ours. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And said, who cleanses the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place? Right. And when, and when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profane, they thought it. They thought it best to pull it down. Right. Unless it should be a reproach to them. That's right. They said it was that it had been dedicated to something else. Yeah. At that point, you can't clean it and go back to it and think that it's going to be good. No, 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 no. It don't go like that. Something as holy as that, and would be used for specific rituals. No, we got to do this again. Tell me. Because because if the heathen had defiled it, right. therefore they had pulled it down. And laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in the covenant place. Right. Until this, until there should come a prophet to show that he what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former. Right. And made up the sanctuary and the things that were that were within the temple and hollowed in the hollow and hollowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels. And into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offering. Right. And of incense in the table. Right. And upon the altar they burnt incense. Mm -hmm. And the lamps that were burnt, that were upon the candlestick, right. they lighted. That that they might give light into the temple. Right. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils. Right. And finished all the works which they had begun to make. Mm -hmm. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the, which is the month of Kaslu. Uh -huh. In the hundred, in the hundred and fourth, and eighth year, they rose up betimes in the morning mm -hmm. and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they made. Right. Look, look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it. Mm -hmm. Even in that, it was it was dedicated with songs and cisterns and cisterns and harps and cymbals. Right. Then all the people fell upon their faces, mm -hmm. worshiping and praising God of heaven, right. who had given them good success. Mm -hmm. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days, mm -hmm. offered burnt offerings with gladness. This is why Hanukkah is kept for those eight days. Uh -huh. And sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Mm -hmm. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold uh -huh. and with shields and the gates and the chambers. Right. And the and hang doors upon them. Mm -hmm. Thus was there a very great gladness among the people. This is where they get their, uh, uh, how would you say, decorating during this season from. They get all of this from us. And then we be scared to do it because it looked like we copying them. But this is what our forefathers did. Hanukkah actually means to rededicate. It says Hanukkah is constructed from three letters, roots. Chet, Nun, Kaf, which also happens to be the root for the word having to do with teaching and education. In this case, with the root Chet, Nun, Kaf, one of these meanings is to dedicate anew or to rededicate. Another is to educate. And the third is to educate oneself. So, in doing this, in doing this, and this is what our forefathers did, in doing this, you have to understand that if you wanted to do something, and, and because it was a celebration, it was a time that we all came out to celebrate, but it was also the rededication of the temple. Now, how do we know this? Because all through the first century, CE, our forefathers did it. All through the first century CE, the priesthood did it. Now, people are going to tell me what they 1999 or 2015 mind that we need to stop doing that when from 
before your great, 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 great grandfathers were born and before all of these rabbinim that are running our rabbinical systems were formed, this was done? All you got to do is look at the history. The history tells us that this was something that our forefathers did. Mm. Um, if you want to give gifts, let them be educational gifts to educate our children about this time. This is a time where our forefathers stood up against the Seleucans mm. and fought a great battle and rededicated the temple. Mm. How can you shut that down? How can you say, oh, we shouldn't celebrate this? Let me tell you something. According to Deuteronomy 17, it says that we have the power, the judges of the time have the power to institute certain things. And as I finish up this lesson, I'll prove my point. Now, the dreidel thing is something that was European created. That's a fact. You can't get beyond that. But just because somebody else created it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any good. Mm. And that's what I want us to understand. Yeah. That's all I want us to understand. Like, it has a lot to do with our history. People took our history and created things. But I'm not going to get into that because I don't have too much time as far as to actually get into it. All of that. Um, it says, how did it become the Festival of Lights? A lot of people want to know how Hanukkah became the Festival of Lights. Yeah. And um, we're going to I, I attempt to go into it. Now, this is one of the ways. All right. This is an excerpt. Uh, from uh, from something having to do with uh, Flavius Josephus. It says, it is true that absence of mention does not definitely prove that the custom did not exist back then, but the fact that Jewish Roman historian Flavius Josephus wrote at the very end of the first century CE in his book, Antiquities of the Jews, that he does not know why the holiday is called the Festival of Lights. So you mean to tell me that in the first century CE, before he was born, before um, any of this Christmas stuff was implemented, that our people referred to this as the Festival of Lights without any kind of European influence? Yeah. This is what they did, mm -hmm. right? Um, in the Mishnah uh, Bhava, um, Bhava Kama uh, 6.6, 6, it says, um, but this is a reference from Yehuda Hanasi or Yehuda the Prince, who was uh, one of the big shots during the intertestamental period. And um, he is the actually the one that you know put together the Mishnah. It says, um, it says, it says here, it says about the about a century later, in approximately 200 CE, when Rab, when the rabbi called Yehuda the Prince was compiling the Mishnah, he did not devote a special uh, part of it to Hanukkah as he did with other holidays. In fact, the Mishnah hardly mentions the holiday, which indicates that Yehuda must have felt it not an important holiday at all. Like because it's not mentioned, in, you know, likely because it wasn't mentioned in the Bible. It says, however, when the Mishnah does mention a holiday, it also mentions a Hanukkah candle. So Hanukkah candles are also something that are not martyred, that these are things that our fathers had back then. This is why it's important for us to, to study. It says, however, when the Mishnah does mention the holiday, it mentions a Hanukkah candle, Hanukkah candles. Also, um, almost as an aside, in a section dealing with the, the, the tort law, right? It says, if a camel laden with flat passes by in a public domain and it's loaded with it's, it's loaded with uh flocks, it says, 
entered into a shop and caught fire. It says the owner of the candle is liable. But if the shopkeeper left his light outside, the shopkeeper is liable. It says Rabbi Yehuda says, if it was a Hanukkah light, he is not liable. So these were certain things, certain uh, things that have to do with intricacies of the law that were put in play, but in consideration with Hanukkah candles. And this is 200 CE. So you know what that proves? That proves that even the lighting of Hanukkah candles or the menorah is not something that was instituted by Europeans or by anyone modern. This is something that was ancient that was implemented because this writing goes back to 200 CE. Not only that, but there are a lot of things that we as a people implemented into our practice of Torah that the creator of heaven and earth accepts. Do me a favor. Go to Zechariah chapter uh, 8, verse 18. And this is the last thing. And after this, I'll finish saying what I'm saying. I'll fin I'm, I'm finished. And you can, we, we can go ahead on. Um, but these are the other holy days that we started. And God mentions them. So that means we do have a certain amount of juice in heaven to create things. Got it? Oh, yeah, that's all the scriptures. It's, it's built different. Yeah. Mm. So, in there, it's going to mention different holy days, it's going to mention the uh, different fast. That we had and that we implemented. Jack, Zechariah uh, chapter 8, verse 18. We're in the book of Zechariah chapter 8, verse 18. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month. Hold up. It says the fast of the fourth month. I don't remember hearing about a fast of the fourth month in Leviticus 23. Mm. The fast of the fourth month, go ahead. The fast, the fast of, of the fifth month. The fast of the fifth month. I don't even think that's in the book of Leviticus 23. Go ahead. The fast of the seventh month. The fast of the seventh month. Now, we do have a fast in the seventh month, but it's not something that God would end this scripture the way he ends it, talking about Yom Kippur in that way. So the fast of the seventh month, it can't be Yom Kippur. It has to be something else. Go ahead. And the fast of the tenth month. And the fast of the tenth month. So now we have four fasts that our people kept that are not even mentioned here. Let's talk about it. Read it. Read some more. It said, shall become occasions for joy and gladness. Right. Happy festivals for the house of Judah. Right. Because these fasts commemorated tragedy, the creator is telling us that these fasts that we implemented that were because of tragic events in our history, this is why we created these fasts. The creator is saying no longer will these fasts be for tragedy, but I'm going to turn these fasts into feast. Mm -hmm. So all that tragedy that you had, you'll no longer remember it. You'll remember the feast. Right? Mm -hmm. So the first fast, let's look at this. It says the fast of Gedalia, the third fast of, 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 of Tishri. Or the Tishri is also referred to as the month of Etanin. Right? So the third of Tishri, which would be three days from Yom Teruah, there's a fast right before Yom Kippur comes in. And this is the fast of Gedalia. In the earliest att uh, attestation of Gedalia appears to come from the extra biblical source. A seal impression found at Lachish, southwest of Jerusalem, dating to roughly 600 BCE, 
bears the inscription Gedaliyahu, who is over the house. The title refers to the chief cabinet position within the king's court. The name and variant of the name Gedaliah has been taken by some as a reference to the subject of the fast of Gedaliah. Thus, Gedaliah, in his early career, appeared to have been a high, appeared to have held a high position in Judite royal court. So there was a fast that was implemented for Gedaliah in his assassination. This is the fast of the seventh month. But this is also something that also led to our demise as a people. Asar Beit Tevet, the fast of the 10th month. Asar Beit Tevet, the fast commemorating the siege of Jerusalem. This is a siege of Jerusalem. This is also the fast as mentioned in Zechariah chapter 8, 19, the fast of the 10th month. It says it was done to commemorate the 10th day of the Hebrew month in a minor fast in, Ju in, in Judaism. It says the fast com commemorates the siege of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon. Of Babylon. Now, another thing is, this is a fast that our forefathers did after we went into captivity in Babylon. This was implemented by our people. This is the fast of the 10th month. So far, we covered the fast of what month? The fast of the seventh month and the fast of the 10th month. This will be held on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. This is the fast of Asara Beit Tevet. Shivan Asar uh, uh, Beit moves. This is another fast, and this is the fast of the fourth month. The fast actually commemorates five tragic events that occurred on this date. The fast actually, it says, Moses breaks the tablets when he saw the Israelites worshiping the golden calf. During the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem, the Israelites were forced to cease from offering their daily offering due to lack of sheep. Apostomos burns the Holy Torah. An idol was placed in the Holy Temple. The walls of Jerusalem were breached by the Romans in 69 CE. This fast commemorates all of those events. This is another reason why our people fast. And this is the fast of the fourth month. Then you have Tisha Ba'av, which would be Wednesday, July 26, which will fall on Wednesday, July 26 this year. It's the fast of the fifth month. Tisha Ba'av, which literally means the nine, ninth day of the Hebrew month Av. It is a 24-hour period of fasting in remembrance of the destruction of the first temple and the second temple in Jerusalem. So this is what it is in reference to. Our forefathers conducted all of these fasts and there's proof of it in intertestamental period, in intertestamental history. So my thing is this, and this is why I kind of get mad at people that don't know much, because there are a lot of people out here with a, a three-year education, a 10-year education in this way of life. And what I think they need to do is read a little more before they become Google teachers. Because a lot of people just think that they can read a Google text and then get some understanding and teach it but that's not the case. You have to study the history of our people. The last time we had, and I keep saying this, the last time that we had a functional priesthood was during that intertestamental period. Also, if we were to look at a lot of the intertestamental history, we would understand how our forefathers kept the Shabbat too, and how they kept it from sundown to sundown. See, if we knew our history, Instead of trying to come up with stuff, 
and invent ways of doing this law, then we will realize that our forefathers kept the Sabbath from sundown to sundown. It ain't hard to tell. All you got to do is read a book. And you'll look, and a lot of the arguments that we have that separate us as a people will be answered. So what I want everyone to do is do some research. You don't have to believe a thing that we're telling our people on this uh, particular you know, um, platform. Look it up yourself. Look it up yourself and you'll see that it's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of practice when it comes to this. There's been thousand year practice on certain things in reference to um, these holy days that we actually instituted. So it's really important that we understand this stuff. You know, with that, I want to give all honor and praise to the power of Abraham, to the power of Isaac, to the power of Jacob. I pray that everybody got something out of it. And I bid you on the tongue of our ancient forefathers. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Hallelujah. Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're back, right? I thank God so much. First, I want to ask the great king, please be with Chief Yashar's family. Mosiah, and heal them. Heal his Isha, please. And heal his babies. All glory and all praise to the God of our salvation. You know, when I was listening to the Maccabees, you know, I got hype, man. You know, it was a heightenness. You know how years ago, brothers, you watch a Bruce Lee movie and you come out with your hands all curled up and like, you, you can do all that stuff. I, I'm hype, man. I said, and I'm older. I go home and push up more now. I'm going to do more. I punch a tight down the street. You understand? I said, you got to yeah. Hey, come on. We got to try every day to get our manhood back, brothers. You know? Then I got sad with the fast. You know? Yeah, man. I thank God for my son, who I learned a lot from. You know what I mean? I thank God. It make me proud, man. You know? Hallelujah. I thank God for y'all. That's right, family. Let's make these chairs look like something. Let's show that the glorification that goes up to God in this place goes up to God with us in them damn chairs. Huh? Make, yeah. You know? It takes time. You know, after that pandemic, man, people got comfortable. <laughs> there is, man. But we need, to, we don't have time for comfort no more, man. They fighting us through thick and thin. And when you sleeping, they fighting against us. Yeah. They got forces that come in when we go to sleep to come up with things against us. All glory and all praise. I pray that God be with the people that are sick and our family online. I pray God enlighten you and love you. You know what I mean? All glory and all praise to the king, man. Don't forget, we mighty men. Yeah. And we mighty women. Not we. I ain't a mighty woman, man. You know what I mean? But, you know, there's mighty women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Close it out. Come on. Jeez. Hallelujah. 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 Shadah lehenu wale abotenu. Abi ava mabi yiska wa abi yakob. Ata kwados weshe meka kwados barusha meka lolam wahed. Baruku shadah mama murak. Baruka shadah mama murak lolam wahed. Baruka ta shadah lehenu meleka ho la ma she bibaro mahari mahari beha ma motea sheharim. Who be puna mesha neiting? Who ma kani me asmanim? Um sa dehera koka vi me mishmaroke barakia ke zono. Warie yon wa la la gweho lifne wa koshe wa koshe lifne ho. Umabdi liom umabdi la la umabdi liom bang la la shada is about shemo. El kabkayam tamit maloka le num lo la mwahed. Baru kata shada marari varavim. Aba olambe israel ameka ba torat misoku kim. Umish bati motanum mimareta. 
Arkenga shida lehenu besha benu kumenu nasiya beku keka. Unishba mirebele tora teka umiso teka lola mwaere. Kien kayenu boeme ya menu baeme e ya wai la ila. Me habe kata tasiri menu lola ming. Baru kata shida we mamo Yisrael. Ya hira zome feneka shida lehenu wale abo tunshi ani beha mitash. Bimera me ya menu bekein kenu mitora teka besham na pateka. Biria kimi olam shani kwa meniyo. We are the bar and I mean, Kat Yehuda, you shall I'm Kimi Olam Shani Kwaminiot, Baruch Shemeka, Baruch Yemeneka, Baruch Tora Teka, Baruch Kudusha Teka, El Shaddai Malek, El Shaddai Malak, El Shaddai Mlok, Lolam Wahed, Baruch Shem Kabor Makuto, Lolam Wahed, Baruch Kabor Lohim, Mink Komo Malek Elyon. We pay homage to El Shaddai, Abi Abraham, Abi Iska, Wabi Yaakov, El Shaddai Malek. El Shaddai Imlak, El Shaddai Imlok, Lo Olam Wa'ed, Baruch Shem Kabor, Malkuto, Lo Olam Wa'ed, Baruch Kabor Lohim Min Kumo, Melek El Yom, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen. Praise Yah, praise Yah, that was Chief Shama. Ben Ezakim, son, one of the sons of the ancient. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Family, may God bless us and keep us and cause his face to shine upon us. Blessed be our king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The info to our PayPal, you go on the PayPal website and click on send money or donate. Then type in the email address, shamayisrael297 at gmail.com. You can also go onto our YouTube page on the main picture, lower right-hand corner of the picture. There's a button that says, support Shema. Click on that and it takes you right to the PayPal. Or you can go onto our website, which is www.shamayisraelinc.org. Click menu, then click support. And it gives you three different options. Or you can mail us a check or money order to Shema Yisrael, address 297 South Saratoga Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11233. For any questions or comments, you can email us at shamayisrael297 at gmail.com. The number to our cash app is 347-989-4869. That number is 347-989-4869. Shalom, family. <laughs>